Okay, we'll call to order this November the 2nd, 2016 meeting of the Franklin County Commission. Commissioner Waymar? Here. Vice Chair Renaud? Present. Chair Howard? Present. Commissioner Harris? Here. Commissioner Dunn? Here. If you'll all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing for the invocation that will be led by Reverend Craig Robertson of the First Christian Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Lord, we are thankful to be together to do your work for this community. We pray that we listen with our eyes and our ears and see what is going on in our community and help our community. Bless the commissioners, bless those who are here. Bless all the leaders of our communities and of the, around the world. Bless us, dear Lord, in God's name we pray, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Want to sign up for public comment? No. Okay. Takes us to correspondence and organizational business. Derek? I don't have anything at this time. Okay. No public comment to the consent agenda. Items today that need to be considered and approved are the Franklin County meeting minutes for October the 12th, 2016, the commission meeting minutes for October the 26th, 2016, and the study session minutes for October the 31st, 2016. Also, we have tax change orders in the amount of a minus $1,384.52. We have claim vouchers in the amount of $174,000 five hundred and fourteen dollars and sixty three cents and we need to prove the pay period for from September the 21st 2016 through October the 20th 2016 in the amount of one million ninety six thousand six hundred twenty one dollars and twenty seven cents there's no questions on the consent agenda we'll look for a motion to approve so moved second a motion and a second to Commissioner Raymer? Yes. Commissioner Renaud? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay. Takes us to item of business. The first item of business is to discuss and consider for approval donation requests from the 2016 OMSA Uncorked Wine and Beer Tasting and Auction. Derek. I thought she said something about they put a basket together for them or something. Uh, I'd say that's about what we do for most things. I mean, yeah, go ahead. All right, make a motion. We uh, <coughs> donate $250 of uh, funds from the uh, transient guest tax to uh, the OMSA Uncorked We're in Wine and Beer Tasting and Auction. Second. Have a motion and a second, Janet. Commissioner Renaud? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, second item. Discuss and consider for approval donation request to the Ottawa Veterans Day celebration at Haley Park. Um, I have Harold on news. He's not here.
done that for several years in a row, haven't we, Roy? Yeah, several years in a row, and also I think the city gave the same amount. I think so, too. What that, what's actually they do with that? What? It's for helping the parade and doing the reenactments uh, down in the park, the forest park. And they're going to have about 150 reenactors from Civil War uh, and World War II doing demonstrations. And this helps cover the expenses of some of these reenactors coming in uh, at Forest Park and then also helps with the parade. Uh, does any of that go to the flag, the healing fields flags that they put up? Because don't they have to replace some yes, of those? Yes, also they, the, they have to re we have to also the flags replace too. some of those flags from time to time. Okay, and so we've been doing that for some time, $1,000. I'll make a motion to approve $1,000 for the Veterans Parade Committee. Second. I have a motion to second to donate $1,000 to the Veterans Day celebration. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Renaud? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay. Zipping right through this. Item number three, discuss and consider for approval the third quarter financial and activity report. Mitch. <coughs> Good morning. Pretty straightforward here, quarter report. Um, so uh, this is our this was our busy quarter for immunizations, so we usually have a lot more income and um, some insurance write-offs, though, with um, the Affordable Care Act and the requirement to provide preventive medicine, we pretty much get paid for immunizations. We have a few issues occasionally, but that's all covered, so our write-offs aren't as great. Um, and the new system is um, helping us with our billing, so uh, and more people have insurance, so we're not having the write-offs we normally have for family planning and stuff, not quite as much as we've seen in the past. So, um, so like I said, we've been really busy with the immunizations and those kinds of things in the last quarter. And we continue to have a significant concern with the sexually transmitted infection outbreaks that we see. Um, some of them are linked to individuals in other counties around us, but a lot of it's just right here. And, um, it's not getting better anytime fast, anytime soon. It doesn't look like so. We continue to deal with that. That um, the rainy season certainly added to some of the mold issues throughout the county, and mosquitoes have been somewhat of a concern, though they really shouldn't be for us. Um, other than they're a pest, we aren't seeing a lot of disease, if any. We've had one, just one case of a mosquito-borne illness uh, reported to us this year. So. Even though we had a lot of mosquitoes, we didn't see a lot of illness from them, and we didn't see the normal amount of tick-borne diseases, so that's a good thing, too, for uh, the summertime and that type of thing. I listed there on our activity report some of the um, things we've been involved with, and one of the pushes, and I think we reported on that last when Mary Ann came to visit, is the Breastfeeding Coalition and trying to move some of that policy forward, and then um, continuing to work on the healthy living initiatives that we have going. So. Um, so our financial statement, our service income was 146,762 and 52 cents. We had um, 10,306 dollars and 86 cents in insurance write-offs. That's part of our contract. Um, our grant income was 54,089 dollars, and um, we received an additional 50,000 dollars as the first payment of the Pathways grant, which is new. Uh, so um, we have that. The only actual write-off would be $1,011.09 of um, just write-offs for individuals who are on a sliding fee scale or are unable to pay uh, for their services. So I would request approval for that write-off. Is your flu shots about the same as normally at this time of year? Are they up any? Uh, you know, I think about the same. And, and this time of year, October and November, we also start seeing individuals who turn 65 for Prevnar and pneumonia shots. So they come in for flu, Prevnar, and pneumonia all at once. And so that's typically what we see October, November, December. Good. Anyone have any questions for Midge? If so not, we'd love to. I got a question. Now. Sure. Sorry, what? what's, the, what's the protocol for dog bites? Um, the protocol for the health department is different than for the sheriff's department, but for, for us, when we get a dog bite, then um, I make contact with the victim, 
the owner, if I can identify and find their residence or their phone number, sometimes I don't always have that. Um, and depending, <laughs> under state statute, any dog bite, uh, any <coughs> dog that bites should be quarantined for 10 days. Um, but the health officer, which is Dr. Ransom, would have the option of how that dog is quarantined. Now, since Ottawa has an ordinance, um, and we worked with Ottawa to, in their ordinance that they can automatically quarantine the dogs uh, based on set criteria, either at home or at Prairie Paws. For the county out in the rural area, um, the determination should be made. I try to go out if I get the information in a timely manner. So uh, go out, visit with the victim and the owner, determine if the dog is, well, some of the criteria for quarantine, like at a veterinary clinic, is whether the bite was, uh, whether the dog's vaccinated, of course, that's first, or not. Um, whether it was a provoked bite, in other words, did somebody, you know, if, dog, if a dog's eating and a child comes, comes up and takes food out of the dog's pan, then that's a natural instinct for a dog. So it may not be a vicious dog, but it may have nipped, which we have to follow up on anyway. So we would take that into consideration on whether the dog is at risk. The other thing is, is there a place to quarantine the dog? In other words, during the 10-day quarantine, which is an observation for illness or rabies, um, they, the only person that should be in contact with that animal is the person who's taking care of that animal. So they need to have a room or a pen to put the dog in. Um, it doesn't always work that way. I mean, things happen. Sometimes owners are upset that the dog bite and they kill it. Um, I've had to go out and pull dogs out of creeks before because they've thrown them away, you know, and then you have to send the head in to be tested for rabies, regardless of whether it's vaccinated or not, because even though the rabies vaccine is very, very good, there have been a couple of times when, the, when um, it didn't, the animal was still sick. So you can't ever take that risk. So it's kind of complicated. I mean, there's some judgment in there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's kind good. of. <laughs> <laughs> um, you didn't get bit, did you really? No, not yet. <laughs> Want to be ready. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well, I, you know, we've talked to Prairie Paws about doing some rabies vaccination clinics, but then they've started taking that on with Manhattan and the vet uh, school. Um, we really need to get more animals vaccinated, not just dogs, but cats also. Some of the cats, uh, we've had cat rabies and in the county actually more common uh, we've had more positive rabies from cats than we have from dogs in the last few years thank you yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> any more questions well thank you for the report Midge we also sure. want to thank you again for stepping up on the mold with, uh, oh, you're welcome that was big for us for what you did anyway with that I would look for a motion to approve the third quarter financial and activity report so moved move. Uh, motion and second. Uh, we tied. It was tied. Eve. One, two, three. <laughs> Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Renault? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay. Takes us to staff reports. All right.
Is that Monday a study session? No, it's not. No. Okay. We usually get close to uh, to that week, and then Make the if there's nothing pressing that has to be decided, we cancel it. Okay. So that yeah, decision's yeah. usually made about Friday, I think. I'm leaving town on the 23rd, but if we have something pressing that we need to have a commission meeting, I, I can be here for it and leave leave as soon as it's over. So I'm okay with whatever. Did you get anything else to add? Hopefully we got an invitation from December 1st. We did that invitation, so we hope 20 people can make it for our staff meeting tomorrow. Okay. Sure. Well, sir, uh, periodically I update you on the line of duty deaths in our, uh, around the country. Last night we uh, Started the night with 111 so far this year. Um, there are three more officers that I was notified this morning that were killed overnight, one down in Miami, Florida, and then two up in Iowa um, on the ambush. Um, with that said, I want to say thank you to the board for you guys have made a commitment um, as far as some of our equipment, making sure that we are funded for our body armor, and then also the cameras, getting those, making sure that we have operating cameras in all of our cars. Those are things that help keep us, keep our guys safer and then help us be able to investigate things when they happen af afterwards. So I would appreciate that. Um, along the lines of that, if you're familiar with the uh, officer up in Alaska that was ambushed and then um, has since died, um, he's the nephew of a, a couple that lives here in Franklin County. So even, even a line of duty death up there, has, uh, it hits people at home. Here, so uh, I just want to say thank you for the, your guys' commitment to to keeping our to keeping us safe out there. Um, the other thing I have is that last night we had our first uh, meeting of the board of directors for the uh, sheriff's office foundation, and um, so that is officially up and running. We have a, a good group of directors, and um, they've elected their officers, and uh, they have ideas as things that they would like to do um, to support the sheriff's office and. Uh, um, it help ed help us educate the public on things, and so um, I think it's going to be exciting, and that's officially up and running now. So, I want you guys to know that I'll issue a press release on it once I get it all typed up with uh, who the members are and and uh, officers and everything. But I wanted you guys to know that first meeting was last night. So, if you guys have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Good. So, thanks for the update. Thanks. I know this is a slow time for you, Janet, but do you have anything that you want to <laughs> share? Okay, <laughs> that will take us to Commissioner Comments and Board Reports. Then we'll start. I don't have anything. I don't have anything to add. Okay. I won't be at the, I'll be out of town this weekend, so I won't be able to go to the First Friday Forum. So. Anybody wants to go to that, usually I get a little update on what's going on in the county. I haven't attended any board meetings since the last there is. I uh, will be attending uh, on this date uh, after this meeting <coughs> later today. The Heartland Works uh, Incorporated meeting in uh, Topeka for the Chief Elected uh, Officials Board and Local Workforce Development Board. Uh, which those folks are directly related to uh, developing the workforce. Uh, today is going to be a, a fairly long meeting reviewing uh, the Workforce Investment Act and the dollars that we put in that to try to help people uh, find jobs and keep them and, and get them ready for the workforce. And that's it. Okay. Uh, yesterday I attended the uh, executive board meeting, the FCDC. Um, we talked about Rock Creek as we do every meeting. Uh, also, that James gave an update on a 
couple businesses that are he's working with that have showed interest in coming to our area and they're trying to work something out and make that happen and other than that I've not been to anything else since the last meeting uh, anyone have anything else okay if not this was fairly quick today but we we'll look for a motion to adjourn so move a motion is a second second all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. We're adjourned.